Lady Cow. Grab a mic. <laughs> Lady Gladria. What? Most powerful elf in all of Middle Earth. What? Standing next to Mithrandir, also known as Gandalf, the wisest wizard, wizard in all of Middle Earth. And she's asking him a question. Why did he bring a halfling, Bilbo Baggins, on his quest to fight a dragon? Do, do I need a clicker? <laughs> Just remember you brought this on yourselves. <laughs> My name is Julian Mikhail Lake. For those of you who want to know some fun facts about me, I was named after this guy, Julian Vaughn, who used to be the president of the NLACP. My middle name is taken after Mikhail Gorbachev, who used to leave the Soviet Union and to its eventual demise, and that's uh, what that gets you. When I was a little kid, I wanted nothing more than to be a superhero. To wake up one day and discover that I had superpowers, I would gladly taken an arm and a leg and given it away if I could just have any of these people's lives for me. <laughs> but as I got older, I thought, you know, the best thing about having superpowers is that you get to punch Hitler in the face. <laughs> like, having superpowers allows you to right the wrongs that no one else can. You can fight crime and solve social injustice and wear terrible clothes. But Spider-Man taught me that with great power comes great responsibility. You see, you have all these magnificent powers, but really, if you use them wrong, they can be just as villainous as they are heroic. <laughs> these people also had great power, but they used them terribly. And it gave me some pause thinking about what is it that I want in life about when it comes to superpowers. I pursued a career in politics and policy to have power to influence people's lives on a grander scale, but what will that get me? Here's an example to illustrate what that gets you. Here are two boats. They've been rigged to explode by this guy. One of them has a bunch of U Chicago graduate students on a uh, boat crews, and the other is filled with a bunch of prisoners, and they're being stopped, that guy's being stopped by that guy. Here's a game tree, which I know I created for all of you to understand, this is uh, in which you have payoffs. That each boat takes turns trying to blow each other up, but um, if neither blows the other one up, then they have an optimum payoff. But if they blow each other up, then they're sad, because they were either blown up or blown up the other one up. As you can see, this is very similar to a centipede game. Now, second years, I know you blocked this from your memory. <laughs> if you dig deep, you'll remember that the payoffs increase as time goes on. The more that you, when you turn the turn over to the next player, you have a higher payoff next. That game and all of these games um, illustrate that oftentimes when we center ourselves on our payoffs and our fears about um, what is going to happen, we end up with suboptimal outcomes, like the prisoner's dilemma, a coordination trap, and the chicken game. This is all stems from this underlying philosophy that undergirds all of game theory and political economy, that my payoffs are greater than your payoffs. We call this rationality. And yet, it leads to so many disastrous outcomes. Let's go back to the beginning of the uh, slides. To answer why Mithrandir, or Gandalf, brought Bilbo Baggins with him, he says that Saruman and many other people believe that power is what we need to defeat evil and <coughs> darkness. But it's really love and courage that he believes is what keeps evil at bay. I came up with this new concept after watching this movie and reading these books, that we should change the underlying concept of game theory that my payoffs are equal to your payoffs. I call this novel concept love. I'm trademarking it, you cannot steal it. <laughs> we can see that if we value each other's payoffs as equal to our own, we always seem to arrive at the optimum outcome. 
It's quite fascinating. I know that this is not something that our, your professors will ascribe to, but you know, sometimes an F is, is all right. <laughs> I think that we should rebrand this philosophy from rationality to fear. You see, it's when we are afraid that we are most concerned about our interests as opposed to those of the others around us. As Yoda said, fear leads to anger, anger leads to hate, and hate leads to suffering. Fear is what drives our incentive to acquire more power, to acquire superpowers, if that's possible. We would love power because it prevents us from being attacked by those that we, that we are afraid of. Sometimes power is great. If you have the responsibility to wield it, you can save lives and little kids with red balls, or you can use it to spy on people in a very scary, menacing manner. What we should instead be focused on is the power that we already have. It doesn't matter what your position is, or how much influence you wield, what your title is at your job, you can change the dynamic, the game tree that you are living in. All you have to do is make a little bit of a sacrifice. You see, in the beginning of a centipede game, the payoffs are very small. We only have to sacrifice one or two um, in order to get further down the tree. And as we do that, it compounds. And as Frodo points out here, that sacrifice leads us closer to the optimum outcome. The farther we down, get down the game tree, the more we change our beliefs about one another. We realize that if we end up at minute 12 or hour 13 after we haven't blown each other up in the boats, then we have to change our perception about what the others are thinking about us. And that, I believe, is love and how love can change the world. Any other questions? No? Okay. 